Hi, and welcome back to the Fantasy Football Profits. We're so excited to have you guys here today. Uh, we just wanted to thank you. We just passed uh, 400 subscribers. Uh, just thank you for the support. As uh, we were just talking the other day, uh, you know about some things we're going to be uh, looking forward, uh, looking kind of see how we make some improvements. We'd love to get you guys' input, so leave a comment below. Uh, but once again, we thank you for your support. Remember to subscribe, uh, leave a comment below, like, and turn on notifications. We really appreciate your guys' interaction and building that community. Uh, I guess we'll get right into it from there then. We'll be talking waiver wire pickups. Yeah, this is our uh, week 11 waiver wire theme. But once again, I just want to reiterate what he said. That we're excited to have you join us. We really want to grow this. We want to grow the website, the YouTube site. So we want feedback. We want to put out there the best information. We want to take fantasy football seriously, but not take ourselves too seriously. So thank you once again for your support. So we want to get a, kind of an early jump on week 11 waiver wire moves that you may want to consider. Now, maybe going to this week, you're looking at replacing a guy who's injured. Do you have guys on a bye week? This is last week for buys. But it's also that time of year that we would encourage you to begin to think about playoffs. If you're a team that looks like maybe you're going to make the playoffs or maybe you're a team that's already kind of locked up a position, this is the time to begin to position yourself. So you look at weeks 14 through 16, look at who's, who you have, who's out there, and to begin to think about strength of schedule during the playoffs. Now, we have always discouraged that you should never really think about your playoff roster anytime before or right now. Uh, some people think about it early on. Some people even think about it in the draft. And we discourage that for a couple of reasons. One, if you're a guy that you're drafting, you're thinking about who you should draft and what his schedule is weeks 14 through 16, well, first of all, that's the beginning of the year. And you're looking at previous year's defensive rankings. And you're honestly not going to know. A lot's happened. It's the offseason. The quality of defense, you really can't understand trends until weeks two to four. And so to try to go into there and try to look back a year and look at strength of schedule and figure out who your bye week's going to be and who's going to be strong come playoffs, it really is kind of foolish. The other thing we tell people is don't get so preoccupied on making the playoffs that you forget. you got to make the playoffs. So here's what we always encourage you to do. Don't worry about the playoffs. Don't worry about strength of schedule. Look at drafting best talent available. But now it's time. Uh, now it is that time you begin to look at weeks 14 through 16, who's out there, who you have, defense, and things like that. So something to consider this week is your playoff run. Yeah, exactly. Uh, another two things to consider are bye weeks and some injury concerns. So for bye weeks, uh, the Panthers, the Colts, the Jets, and the 49ers all have bye weeks this week. So obviously, if you're looking to pick up some guys, not going to do you much good to pick up guys from those teams. So uh, leave it. Uh, and then some injury concerns that came out of this last week where Aaron Jones sprained his MCL, or at least so it seems. Ty Montgomery re-injured his rib, and uh, Rob Kelly hurt his ankle. So those are the three major injuries. There may have been some more minor ones, but those are the three big uh, injury concerns that we noticed. Uh, so we'll uh, talk a bit more about those later, however. Now, at this point, when looking at waiver wire, unless you're in a 10-team league or less, um, you're going to have a hard time finding gold out there. You're going to have a time to, hard time finding a great player from the waiver wire. Once again, at this point, they're usually picked apart. And so most of the players that you're going to pick up right now, unless A, uh, there's an injury that creates a spot for a player, or unless it's a rookie who starts to get more playing time and he comes into his own, typically these aren't going to be great players, but these are more plug-and-play players that you're going to look at from this point forward. So we want to begin uh, with our running back considerations for you guys. First running back you should consider is Jamal Williams, running back of the Packers. Now, as we talked about already, uh, Aaron Jones is injured, Ty Montgomery is injured, and it would appear at this point that Jamal's slated to be the starter in Week 11. He's available in 97% of the leagues out there, so he's readily available. Now, today he wasn't great. He had 20 carries for 67 yards, and that turns out to be 3.4 yards per carry, so that's not great. I'm honestly not excited about this pick. He struggled early in the year. I don't think he's going to become a great player, but in the meantime, He's going to be starting running back. And for a lot of you out there are scrambling because we get questions all the time. People are just looking for that number two back, and they're struggling out there. So here's a guy that for two weeks you could probably put him in there. Now, I want to caution you. One, his next two matchups are really tough against Pittsburgh and Baltimore. Both have good defenses. So right now, as a starter, he sits at about a running back three or four. He has a very low ceiling, but he's somebody that you could plug in if you're desperate. All right, the next thing we got to talk about is the mess of a Miami running back uh, situation. Uh Talk about uh, two guys, Damian Williams and Kenyon Drake. Kenyon Drake is available in 67% of leagues, uh, and he's played fairly well, averaging 5.3 yards per carry. Uh, first week as a start, he got nine carries for 69 yards with six catches for 35 yards. Uh, that ability to catch out of the backfield definitely keeps him out there for a while, and I like him a bit more than Damian Williams, but 
He's also uh, Damian Williams is also available in 43% of leagues, uh, and he's more of the third down back. Typically gets more catches and uh, some PPR potential, but uh, we like Drake more, and he's also for some reason he's available in more leagues. But uh, that's the guy I target in that situation. I I don't know if anyone's really gonna separate themselves from one another. Um, but I think Drake might have the slight edge, and he's also available in a pretty good portion of the league. So if you're looking out there for a guy, he might be out there for you to kind of fill in for a week or just to stash on your bench. Now that Ajay is gone, somebody has to take over for next year. That might be a guy to just sit on and see. Yeah, I think Kenny and Drake is the guy that you're going to look at that will become a starting running back there. There's a spot open. We'll see how he does. First week, he looked good. I uh, didn't have a lot of carries, but so far, he's a guy that you definitely need to stash out there and see how he does. Next guy that you want to consider out there. Austin Eckler. Now, I heard somebody pronounce his last name different. I think it's Eckler. Running back for the Chargers. Undrafted running back out of Western State. He sits at 5'10", 195 pounds. And today he blew up for five catches for 77 yards and two TDs. He also had 10 carries for 42 yards. Now, before this week, uh, before he blew up, he was getting more and more involved in the passing game. And you could see his role was increasing. So this isn't something that's necessarily surprising. Uh, you can definitely see the right on the wall. But I want to caution there with him also. Uh, he's not going to overtake Melvin Gordon unless Gordon gets injured. So he, he holds value in PPR leagues, a flex play, or in a dynasty league. Keep an eye on him. Now, don't overpay for this guy and don't overreact. He's somebody that uh, I would cautiously have optimism about. So keep an eye on Austin Eckler as a running back out there. You may want to put in your bench uh, and see how his next couple weeks look. All right, next we're talking about uh, James White. Now, he's available in 24% of leagues. That's not great, but basically, if you're in four leagues, you'll be out there in one of them. So check and just see. He has view. Uh, he has mostly value in PPR leagues. If it's not a PPR league, I'm definitely a lot more hesitant to pick him up. But PPR leagues are becoming more common. Uh, I definitely prefer them. So if you're in that league, take a look at him. Um, as we talked about... Um, Many times when we talked about that Patriot situation, excuse me, uh, they have a lot of weapons there. You, know, you talk about Gronk and Cook and Hogan, Amendola, uh, Lewis and Rex, especially in that backfield with uh, Rex Burkett and Dion Lewis. Uh, but we like him. He's fairly athletic and he's played well recently, especially in PPR leagues. Yeah, tonight, uh, you know, uh, he actually scored a touchdown against me. I'm probably going to lose and fall to 8-2 and two because of James White. So he had a decent night again tonight. Although it is a little scary. Now that offense can support a lot of uh, fantasy football points. Um, New England has a, has a great offense, but it is a little kind of hit or miss. He's going to have some games where he'll disappear. And so he's a, uh, he's a PPR play as about a wide receiver 3-4. to four. All right, and the next guy we want to talk about was uh, Duke Johnson. He's available in 27% uh, of leagues. Once again, he's not going to be out there in all your leagues, but if you're in a 10-team league, he'd probably be out there. Uh, he's another guy with pretty much only value in PPR leagues, and he does have a tough matchup next week against the Jaguars, but he's really been stealing some time, some, or some, uh, I guess some touches from Isaiah Crow on. He's looked a little bit better, so if you're in a PPR league, that's another guy to just take a look at and see for a week or two. Another guy that we've talked a lot about out there is Alex Collins. He's available, available in 44% of leagues. Next week he plays Green Bay, who gives up the seventh most points to running backs. Now, a lot of people are concerned because Danny Woodhead's coming back. People actually ask, does that mean that Alex Collins is going to lose carries? Here's what I think is going to happen. Um, I think Danny's return is mostly going to affect Allen at this point. The reason why, if you look at Woodhead, he's a smaller running back. He sits at about 205. And if you look at his age, he's 32 years old, so he doesn't have a lot of durability. He primarily is a back that catches balls with the backfield, so I think he's going to steal targets from Allen. But if you look at terms of being the, the, the running back that's going to carry the ball first and second down, I think Al Collins is still going to be your guy there. He's still younger. He's got the most potential. So I think he's going to get a majority of the carries, even with Danny Woodhead coming back. Al Collins has been productive. His eyes per carry are very solid this year. He's available in about 44% of the league, so Al Collins is a guy that you could pick up. Got a good matchup next week against Green Bay. All right, another guy is Isaiah Crawl. This is the second Browns running back that we're talking about. He's only available in 23% of leagues, and he hasn't looked that great this year, but he's had a bit of a resurgence the last two weeks, averaging 5.7 yards per carries and getting two touchdowns, so he's been stepping it back up. The important thing to note is that the last two games, the Browns have played a bit better, and as the Browns have played better, as that offense has been better, so has Isaiah Crowell. Now, as we talked about a little bit, He's got a low ceiling, but he also has a high floor. So he's a guy to maybe plug in on your bench, add some depth. Once again, he's only available in 23% of leagues. But if you're in four leagues, he'll be out there in one of them. And uh, 
you know, a guy like that shouldn't be out there really in almost any leagues because running back depth seems to be so hard to come by, and he's uh, fairly reliable when that rest of that team is doing all right. Yeah, when it comes to fantasy football, I think half the battle is opportunity. You can have all the talent in the world, but if you don't get the opportunity to play, you're not going to be in. And the coaches love this guy. They really do. They stuck with him. There's no competition. He is the lead guy, and so right there, he's got that opportunity. Now, guy that we've talked about a lot lately is Orleans Dark, who is available in about 27% of the league. No, that's not a lot. I could talk about guys that are available in 90% of the league, but if they're not going to produce, it doesn't do any good. So we want to give you names that you can hopefully find out there that you can actually play that are going to produce for you. Once again, he's available on 27% of the league. He's another one. He's a clear lead back there for New York. He doesn't really have any competition. Today he had 14 carries for 70 yards, another healthy uh, five yards per carry. So this guy has been running the ball very effectively. And if you look at uh, Wayne Gallman, if you look at Shane Vereen, they really operate as a third down or change of pace backs. Orleans is the go-to guy there. He's a guy that you can pick up, you can play. He doesn't have a high ceiling, but he's got a fairly, uh, uh, a fairly stable floor. All right, now, another guy that we're really excited about is Latavius Murray. He's available in 67% of the league, so odds are in your league he's out there. But he's really stepped it up lately. Uh, he's had five consecutive games with double-digit carries. As you talked about, the opportunity is so important. And for Murray, the opportunity is there. Next week, they play the uh, the Vikings play the Rams, who give up the third most points to running backs. So, you know, if this is going to be the week for a running back, for Minnesota running game to really step it up, this is going to be the week. In addition, the last three weeks, he's had 220 rushing yards and two touchdowns on 4.1 yards per carry. So the opportunity is there, the production is there, and the matchup is there. It's going to be a good week for Latavius Murray next week, that's for sure. So all this conversation, is Ezekiel Elliott going to be suspended? He's going to put off the suspension. Well, it finally came to fruition this week. He's suspended. So what do you do with this? Well, I think the guy to look for is Alfred Morris in this situation. They talked about Rod Smith, McFadden. Uh, those guys are really non-factor today. <clears throat> the most effective running back was Alfred Morris. He's available in 27% of leagues, and today he had a 4.8 yards per carry. Uh, he didn't carry the ball a lot in the second half, and the reason why is they fell behind Atlanta quite a bit and had to abandon the running game. But if you know Dallas, they're going to want to get back to running the ball. They've got a great offensive line. Also, one of their offensive linemen today, Smith, left the game hurt. Uh, hopefully he'll be back if he does. I think that offensive line is solid, and I think that Alfred Morris will be a solid play the next five weeks. All right, so another player that we were talking about stashing on your bench is Devontae Booker, available in 93% of leagues is uh, uh, in that Denver running back by committee system with C.J. Anderson, Jamal Charles. Uh, you know, and we don't like that running back by committee system, and he's no means by by no means been unbelievable there. Uh, but the last two weeks, he's looked the best of the three running backs. So just stash him on your bench and see... Uh, you know, Charles is old and kind of on his way out, and they've had CJ in the lineup for a while, and they're clearly just not happy with him. So I feel like it's only a matter of time until Booker really starts to take over that role. So yeah. that's a guy to just stash on your bench and see. However, right now, we wouldn't say that he would be advised to start him. We probably wouldn't do that. No, he's definitely not a guy you want to start. You could stash him tonight, actually. It looks like Charles was the best of the three running backs. It's a running back by Kimi, a three-headed monster there. But Booker's the youngest, the youngest guy there, and he's got some potential, so you could definitely stash him and sit on him and wait and see. Another guy out there, Samaje Perrine, available in 93% of leagues. Well, today in relief, uh, Kelly went down with an injury, and he had nine carries for 35 yards, a modest 3.9 yards per carry. Honestly, he hasn't looked good all year. Um, there's nothing about him that I think is exciting. He's looked slow. He hasn't looked explosive at all. But if you're desperate, I think he might be a one-week play for you next week because it would appear that Kelly's going to miss the game. If so, he sits at about a running back four. All right, now moving on to the quarterbacks. Uh, great transition there, by the way, Rob. <laughs> Um, but anyways, we move on to uh, Philip Rivers, available in 24% of leagues. Uh, next week, not a great matchup necessarily. He plays Buffalo, gives up the fifth fewest points to quarterbacks. Uh, so he's a guy that we would kind of, uh, as you said, what was the term you used, shy away from him, maybe look somewhere else. It's not a great matchup for him. Uh, we look at, uh, in fact, uh, just last week, the Saints blew them out of the water. Uh, Drew Brees and the Saints just killed Buffalo. But no passing touchdowns. They had five or six rushing touchdowns. Just killed them, but they couldn't seem to throw the ball in the end zone. So we're going to uh, uh, avoid Phillip Rivers this week coming up. Yeah, they sit down Tyrod Taylor today. Tyrod Taylor had a brutal game. I think he finished around 67 yards. The interception looked terrible. Phillip Rivers, if you really need him, you can plug him in there. But I would definitely shy away. 
Another guy you may want to consider is Case Keenum. Case is available in 84% of the leagues. They had a big day. He had over 300 yards, four TDs. Uh, looked great. Now, next week he plays the Rams. The Rams give up the 11th fewest points to quarterbacks. Now, if you take a look at uh, Case, uh, Case has played a lot better lately. Now, if you look at the Rams, they fare pretty well against quarterbacks. Now, once again, only the 11th fewest points to QBs. But if you break that stat down a little bit deeper, what you'll find is they haven't played a lot of good quarterbacks. In fact, that statistic, uh, those stats have been kind of built up on quarterbacks. They played Savage, Manning, Bortles, Hoyer, Tolzien. And so they've done really well shutting down quarterbacks, but it's been a while since they faced a good quarterback. Now, I'm not saying Case Keenum is a good quarterback, but I think he's a quality quarterback, and there's some potential here. If you need to look for a guy for an injury or bye week film, he may be your guy to go to. Uh, one thing I would say is I would imagine the Vikings going into this game don't want a shootout. I think they're going to try to run the ball, play good defense and control. I don't think they want to see Case Keenum throw the ball a bunch of times and have to throw for 300 yards, but he's a guy out there who has been adequate as a fill-in. All right, next we got to talk about Eli Manning. Uh, has not played great this year, has been less than impressive, but he's available in 49% of leagues. If you absolutely need a one-week quarterback, look at Eli Manning and just, I guess, think about it. We don't know. You might have some better options out there. I definitely am not excited about him, but he plays Kansas City, who gives up the seventh most points to quarterbacks, and he had a good week this last week against San Francisco, throwing for 278 yards and two touchdowns. So if you're desperate, he's got to look at. However, if you're not desperate, I'm probably avoid it. Yeah, Giants are a team that are headed in the wrong direction at this point. But uh, if you're desperate out there, he may get that you can roll with. It's nice that this is the last week for buys. So a lot of us can get back to having our full lineup there. Mm-hmm. Joe Flacco is available in 89% of the leagues. He plays Green Bay. Green Bay gives up the 17th most points to quarterbacks. Uh, he's played poorly all year. He's been terrible. In fact, right now he still has more interceptions than touchdown passes. He's uh, somebody that's worth a flyer in very deep, deep leagues or if you're really desperate. Another one of those guys that would say, if you need to go there, you can certainly do that, but I'd probably shy away from him. All right, next we're talking about Drew Stanton, available in 97% of leagues, and that's understandable. Nobody was really expecting him to get much playing time uh, this year, but he plays Houston, gives up the second most points to QBs. Uh, he does have Larry Fitzgerald, he's got a little bit of weapons there, um, he really spread the ball around. He's played decent, in fact, he played fairly well against that good Seattle Seahawks defense. So kind of of the last three or four guys we mentioned, I think I like Drew Stanton a little bit more than the others. I say he played well. It's a great matchup, and he's going to be out there. Most likely in whatever league you're in, he's out there. So Drew Stanton is another guy to look at. Another guy you might be uh, thinking about is Ryan Fitzpatrick. Right now he's a quarterback for Tampa Bay until Winston uh, shoulder starts to feel better. They shut him down for a few weeks. He's available in 88% of leagues. He plays Miami because up the 15th most points to quarterbacks. Now this week he was okay. Uh, one of the things he does have going for him, though, next week he'll have his best weapon back. Mike Evans was out this week from a suspension, so he'll have them back. Ryan Fitzpatrick is a guy who's had some success in the past, although as of late the last year and a half he hasn't looked that great, but you could certainly take a role with him uh, if you need to. He plays Miami, and he is widely available. All right, another guy to talk about is Tyrod Taylor. He's available in 20% of leagues. Uh, he plays the Chargers, who give up the 12th fewest points to QBs. And uh, this last game, he only had 56 yards and one interception for a 2.94 fantasy points. Uh, that's a guy to avoid. Uh, even if you're desperate, I wouldn't go with him. Doesn't really seem to be a reliable option. He's been less than impressive. Uh, and he plays, who does he play this coming week? I believe it is. He plays the Chargers to get the 12 fewest points to quarterbacks. The Chargers have actually been decent shutting down quarterbacks this year. And I know some people like Tyrod Taylor, but he's a guy that I'm just not comfortable with. You take away two games this year, and you look at the rest of them, he's been below average. And I yeah. this week is a reminder why I don't trust the guy. Even though he's got some weapons around him, maybe it'll get better with Benjamin learning that offense. But right now, uh, he scares me. Exactly. All right, here's our danger never assume slide. Uh, never assume that a player isn't out there. Derek Carr is uh, available in 13% of leagues. He's a... Uh, Another guy to pick up, Rob. I don't know if you know anybody else, but we always just caution you guys. Just look. Just check every week. You'd be surprised at the talent that is out there. Sometimes there are big names who shouldn't be out there but are, and sometimes there are guys who aren't big names but turn out to be. I mean, at the beginning of this season, how many people had Juju Smith-Schuster in their lineup? Oh, boy, that guy, I tell you, he's coming on. I should have played him this week. I would have won. But, oh, well, I sat him, and I played Hilton instead. Anyways, 
yeah, never make any assumptions. I always check into it. Derek Carr is only available in 13%, but hey, you know what? He's available in 13%. That means a good portion of you out there, he's available in your league if you need a quarterback. So pick him up. Here's some quarterbacks to avoid right now. I would start with Andy Dalton. He's available in 47% of the league. He plays Denver. Uh, now, the one thing I would say is Denver got lit up tonight. That defense just doesn't look as strong as they did. And so you can certainly play him if you want, although Andy Dalton has really struggled all year long. Another guy I'd probably stay away from is Mitch Trubinsky. Now, Mitch Trubinsky, he was good today against Green Bay. He had 297 yards passing and a TD. But once again, that's a, it's a Green Bay offense or defense that's not very good. And now he plays a Lions defense that's much better. Lions has got a solid defense. They give the 10th fewest points to quarterbacks. Mitch Trubinsky, if you go into this week, he, it, it had been three previous weeks before he threw a touchdown pass. I think he was averaged 125 yards per game going into this game. So I need to see more from him before I feel comfortable starting him. I would advise you to stay away. The other guy I would stay away from is Blake Bortles. He's available in 69% of leagues. He plays Cleveland, who gives up the 10th most points to quarterbacks. Now he had a huge week three. Week three, he blew up and Blake threw for four touchdown passes. But if you take that away, he's averaging less than a touchdown pass per game. And I think the reason why I really would stay away from him is that the Jags want to win two ways. They want to play great defense, which they do really well, and they want to run the ball with Fournette. And that's what they're going to do. They don't want Blake to throw the ball a lot, and so he's a guy that I would stay away from. And then another guy that I would stay away from is Brett Hundley. He plays Baltimore, who gives up the second fewest points to quarterbacks. He has been great. And I think right now, if you look at what he's doing, Green Bay's not asking him to do a lot. They've really reduced the playbook down. Obviously, he's no Aaron Rodgers. And he's really become a game manager, uh, trying not to make too many mistakes. So he's a guy that I would stay away from. All right, another couple of guys to stay away from. Uh, Tom Savage. I'm a big stat guy. We love to talk stats all the time. You know, stats say so much about the players. But Tom Savage just looked bad. You know, his stats aren't great, but when you watched, he just played even worse. Yeah. Uh, so just avoid him not looking good, even though he plays Arizona. Another guy is Deshaun Kaiser. He played better today or this last week, uh, but on the year he's only got four touchdowns and 12 interceptions. Uh, let's just remember that he plays for Cleveland, and that's just not a great should situation. Should be enough said right there, right? Yeah, should be enough said. Another name that's enough said is Brock Osweiler. Just let it be. Has not played great at all. And that Denver offense just looks brutal. Yeah. Yeah, Brock looked okay tonight. But he played against a very uh, weak pass defense in New England. But he still didn't have a great night. So, yeah, those are all names. Those are guys that we'd stay away from. If you're really desperate, if you have to roll with them, I suppose you can. But we would advise you to look elsewhere. So here's some wide receivers I think you need to consider. First one is Corey Coleman. Now, this is a guy that's available in 78% of leagues. Now, he's been on the IR. He broke his wrist early in the year, and now he's finally back. And he can return week 11 to play. He's been practicing with the team last week. This guy's a former first-round pick. A lot of people forget about that. And uh, this year, in week one, he had five catches for 56 yards and a TD before the injury. He looked really good. And last year, he had bouts where he looked good. In fact, last year, week two, he had five catches, 104 yards, and two TDs. So this is a guy that's got some talent. And he's got a lot of upside. I think another thing that benefits him really well is in a couple weeks, Josh Gordon's going to be back, and it's going to make it hard for teams to focus or double-team uh, Corey Coleman. So he sits at 5'11", or 5'11", and if you really compare him, he, he's really similar in his style of his play and his body to wide receivers like Antonio Brown and T.Y. Hilton. And I think he's got that potential that he could fall into that. So here's a guy that you need to pick up. Not only could help you this year, but he's definitely a guy, if you're in a dynasty league, that you need to put on your bench and stash him. All right, another guy to talk about is Dontrell Inman. We're kind of excited about him. I know you're very excited about him. Available in 99% of leagues. So he's basically out there in every league. No matter what league you're in, check, he's probably there. Um, just got traded to the Chicago Bears, which is huge. Uh, playing for Chicago, he always looked very talented, very athletic, but he just never had the opportunity. There's so many weapons there. Um it didn't matter that he was a big body, a six foot three inches tall, fast wide receiver. Uh, There's just too many weapons there. Finally, he gets traded his first game there with the Bears. He's the number one wide out his first game, which is, just tells you how much they're going to use him. Uh, it barely knows the offense. Still gets six catches for 88 yards. So we like him more and more going in the future. That's a guy definitely very excited about. Throw him on your bench. He's 
most likely going to be out there. So uh, we're very excited about him. I don't know if you have anything more to say. but Yeah, last year for, uh, for San Diego, he said about the wide receiver 4 or 5 on their team. There was a number of injuries he got to play. In limited time, he had 58 catches for 810 yards and 4 TDs. So he had good numbers last year in limited time. Now he moves a team, like you said, that he's the number one guy. And even today, he did pretty well. Six catches, 88 yards. I think he's a could be a great pick for a lot of you down the stretch here. Another guy is James's, Jameson Crowder. Available in 46% of leagues. Today he had four catches for 76 yards. And this is the second week in a row that he has played and looked well. Last week that he had played, he finished with nine catches for 123 yards. Going into this year, I think a lot of people saw that he could be a wide receiver that could break the 1,000 yards receiving mark. And that hasn't happened. In fact, he struggled. But you look at none of the wide receivers have really emerged. Doxon's not there yet. Pryor's been a major disappointment. So here's a guy that I think could finish the second half of the year very strong, help win some games. If you look at his schedule week 11 through 16, has a very passer-friendly schedule. So this guy's got a great schedule weeks 11 through 16. Uh, you need to pick him up. I think down the stretch he could be really huge for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, another player I want to talk about is Chester Rogers. Uh, he's a guy that not a lot of people have heard about. Uh, it's his second year playing from Grambling State. Never really uh, heard of that until recently. So I kind of come out of nowhere. But uh, big day today. He got six catches for 104 yards and a touchdown. Last four weeks, he's had an increased role. 11 catches uh, last four games. So uh, uh, we're kind of looking at him as a bit of an early breakout player. He's not there yet, but we're really starting to kind of see the gears turn. Uh, he's a guy you're going to want to pick up now as he slowly starts to break out more before he becomes kind of a big more household name so to speak yeah he's available in almost all leagues out there he's a guy a lot of you if you're online of course you're, you're online you have that little place where you can click on your watch list he's definitely something you need to add to your watch list and keep an eye on there he's got some potential he's getting increased role and today he broke out in a big way another guy i mentioned earlier we've talked about before and this is josh gordon he's available in 67 percent of leagues he's far too talented to ignore okay you got to get this guy now I understand there's so many question marks. Will he be playing shape? What if he relapses again? I mean, on and on and on. I get all that, but he's far too talented to pass up. For a lot of you, if you don't remember, in 2014, this is a guy that only 14 games, he had 1,646 yards and nine TDs. Once again, only 14 games. They tried double teaming him. I remember they had, it didn't matter what they did. They couldn't shut this guy down. He has the talent of a Julio Jones, Brown, Hopkins, you name it. He's up there top five. And so I know there's a lot of question marks out there, but you got to get this guy. You got to stash him on your bench. All right. Another guy to talk about is Robbie Anderson. Uh, he's available in 21% of leagues and uh, he's really uh I like the phrase you used today, you know, quietly becoming uh, the number one wideout for the Jets, really uh, stepping up into that role. Uh, has a touchdown reception four weeks in a row. A lot of people don't know that when you bring that up. Well, we were talking today with some people, and uh, he's really kind of quietly, like you said, that's why I like that phrase, quietly. You don't hear much about him, but he's really stepping into that role, becoming a wide receiver you can somewhat rely upon, especially coming out of the Jets as that number one guy. You know those targets are going to be there every week. Yeah, he's a young player that's got a lot of upside. He's six foot three. He's only a second-year player, so he's got potential, but he's actually really taking over that number one role there. I uh, really like this guy. It's in big body, big target, a lot of potential, and he's putting up good numbers. Another guy out there available is Sterling Shepard. Now, he's only available in 21% of leagues because uh, uh, he's moved into the one role for the Giants. Now, the reason why I want to talk about him is he's only available in 21% of leagues, but he's a guy that really shouldn't be available in any leagues out there. He's just far too talented. Now, it's second week back from an injury, and he's not just an option for Eli. We're not just mentioned because, okay, he's going to get some targets. This guy has real talent. He's a very talented wideout that you can't ignore anymore. First week back from an injury, had five catches for 70 yards, and today, 11 catches for 142 yards. This guy's got huge dynasty value. you got to pick him up. you got to play him down the stretch and put him on your bench for next year. All right, another guy we want to talk about is Marquise Lee. Uh, probably the only reliable wide receiver in that offense available in 41 percent of leagues he's had 23 catches in the last four games it's very simple the jaguars like to use him they don't have much choice other than to use him they don't have many other weapons and we like him he seems to be very athletic and very talented so he's a he's a good option you can rely upon him i think that's a fairly solid word i guess
Yeah, you know, in the last four games, he's had a combined 23 catches. 23 catches over four games, that's a, you know, that's pretty solid. That's pretty consistent. Now, he's in an offense that's not a high-profile, it's not a high-octane offense, not get a lot of numbers. But if you're looking for a wide receiver three that's going to put up decent numbers, especially in a PPR league, he's a guy that you can trust. Another guy out there is Jeremy Macklin. Not a pretty pick, not a sexy pick. Doesn't have a high ceiling, or doesn't have a very high ceiling, but he's got a fairly high floor. And uh, he's available in 42% of leagues, and he's had double-digit points in fantasy leagues that have PPR scoring over the last three games. And if you look at his Week 11 through 13 schedule, it's very wide receiver friendly. So this is a guy that would fall into that wide receiver three or four category, and based on matchup, he's a plug-and-play that could help you down the stretch. All right, Robert Woods. I know you're very excited about Robert Woods. I'm fairly excited about Robert Woods. Maybe not quite as much as you, but uh, he's available in 30% of leagues, which is just far too many leagues for uh, his talent in his situation now. We're excited about him. Uh, a lot of things have been said about this guy recently, but that is a very uh, high-powered offense, I guess is a good way to phrase it. Uh, today he had eight catches for 171 yards and two touchdowns in the last Two weeks, he's had four touchdowns. Since week three, he's averaged 80 yards per game and five catches a game. I mean, this is when we talk, when we, we talk about uh, Robbie Anderson and kind of quietly becoming good. This is a guy who's played out of his mind, and people, a lot of people are just not talking about him. This is a guy, if he's out there, which he's out there in basically a third of all leagues, Put him on your bench. In fact, you know he should be in your starting lineup a lot of the time. The way he's been playing lately. Yeah, there might be an occasional game where you're going to sit him, but we have talked about him for weeks. And if you ignore that advice, you really missed out. This guy's getting better and better. Jared Goff is getting better and better, and he's your go-to guy. They actually spent a lot of money for him in the offseason to bring him in and to put him in a position where he would get used a lot in that offense. I really like this guy. Another guy out there is Kenny Galladay. He's available in 93% of leagues. Now, he's been out since week three with an injury, but this uh, rookie wide receiver, in week one, he had the two TDs. He came on the scene. He's a big wide receiver. He's got a lot of talent. Now, he's not a guy that I would pick up and play right now, but because he's young, because he showed a lot of potential, he's a guy that I would stash in dynasty or keeper leagues, somebody you're probably not going to play now. All right, now we'll move on to tight ends. Uh, first tight end we're going to talk about is uh, Jared Cook, available in 30% of leagues. Uh, Last three games, he's averaged 97 yards per game. That's on fire for a tight end. That's kind of unheard of to average that. Now he faces a New England defense coming up that gives up a lot of passing yards. They just Passing defense for New England has not looked great this year. So that's a great matchup we like for Jared Cook. Well, the next guy we're going to talk about is Charles Clay. He's available in 67% of leagues. He's been putting up fairly good numbers before his knee injury. Uh, he's Tyrod Taylor's favorite target, and he's used in that offense so much, especially in the red zone. So if you're looking for a tight end, he should be out there. We somewhat like him. It's not great, but the tight end position is fairly thin as far as talent goes. Yeah, it drops off after about the top uh, three, four to five guys. After that, you're really almost best at that point to do a weekly matchup play on tight ends. All right, and finally, hopefully I'm going to say this right, CJ Federowitz. Uh, he's a guy that we like. Available in 87% of leagues. Uh, just got off the IR with concussion, finally returned. Uh, they use him a lot in that offense. They like him. Uh, quite a bit, especially another guy, tight end position, like to use him in the red zone. So uh, he's a guy to look at, especially if it's just for a one or two week fill in. Here's some defenses you may want to consider. Now we're going to talk about defenses that are fairly readily available out there. Obviously, I could talk to you about some of the great defenses out there right now, like the Jaguars or uh, the Vikings defense is a pretty good defense, some other defenses out there, but they're probably not available. So these are some defenses that are probably most likely available for you guys that have good matchups this week. And one is Arizona at Houston. Right now, the uh, Cardinals are available in 54% of leagues, and they're playing the Texans, who go up the seventh most points to defenses. And that number would actually be better. They'd give up more points, but when Watson was there, he brought that number down. But with Savage at quarterback, they're a bad, bad offense. In the last two weeks, Arizona's had 10 sacks, so this is a good play there. Another one is New Orleans versus Washington. If you take away week one and two, New Orleans really had a bad defense for a couple weeks. Looked like the New Orleans defense of many years previously, but they really fixed that. In fact, since then, since week two, that defense is playing great, and they're available in about 50% of leagues. And then the final matchup out there is Cincinnati at Denver. Uh, Cincinnati's not a great team, but their defense has been solid this year. They're playing Denver, who's given up a lot of points to defenses. 
Well, as we conclude this, we want to say thanks for joining the Fastball Profits. We're excited to grow the YouTube site, to grow a website, to improve our product, our information, to get engaged in the community. We're looking at a lot of things. Subscribe, hit the notifications, give us feedback. Once again, we want to continue to grow this with you guys. Thanks for joining us today. God bless and take care.